All right, guys, welcome to episode number 24 of Kayak Fishing Obsessed. If you love kayak fishing, fishing in general, guys, you are in the right place. I have Jay Bearded Dad fishing with us tonight. And man, I was on a site today and this guy's putting out some banger videos lately when it comes to kayaks. And so we are going to be geeking out on kayaks, what type of kayaks to buy, best kayaks under $1,000. Fishing kayaks, fishing kayaks, fishing kayaks. But before we get there, I got some news and updates for you. I want to thank the sponsor of the show tonight, usrivermaps.com. You guys see over my shoulder here. Um, those on the podcast obviously can't see this, but let me show you this. So this is like a close-up. I haven't done this yet, but what um, Jeff does, and he's, he's a listener. I might be on tonight. So Jeff, if you're on, say hey to everybody. Uh, these are topographical maps, topographical maps. These things are awesome and really in detail um all the streams and riverways and he has them for every state all across the united states so go check him out and uh as you guys can see here there's a code there get 35 dollars off if you're on the podcast it's all lowercase get dollar sign 35 o f f also tonight we got the cast cray a giveaway if you become a channel member of my show of my, of my channel really anytime between now and the next show Cast Gray, my buddy over there, Rick, is going to give you a $10 gift card to his shop. So go check him out. Guys. Oh, yeah, real quick. I had one this uh, past week. So uh, let me see here. Matt Turner, my man. Thank you so much for coming. A member. What do I see here? Someone just like the Outdoor Conquest. My man. Thank you so much for uh, supporting the channel. Guys, I don't make I don't make money on this. All the money goes right back into um, the channel. I mean, StreamYard streaming alone is like $50 a month. So um, thank you all who support. I really, really, really appreciate it. All right. So next we got here at 13 days from today. Guys, I've been talking about this for a long time. The Knucklehead Bass Fishing Series begins. If you are new and you haven't heard about this, um, here in May, uh, there's going to be four one-month tournaments, May, June, July, and August. For me. And if you win that month's tournament, the CPR tournament, catch, photo, release, you want to you win a spot on my team, and we're gonna travel down to like Gunnersville and Lake Wheeler and Huntsville, Alabama, and we're gonna fish off against Chad Hoover and his team, Luke Master, his team, Alex Rudd and his team, the uh, aggressively average anglers, their teams. There's two of them there. Um, we have fishing with Gramps. He's got a team going on. Clay Guida, the UFC uh, champion. So that's gonna be pretty pretty sweet. Larry Melton Jr. Um, what is it john cruz from missile baits so guys this thing is absolutely blowing up so if you have not signed up want to be a part of that i would love for you to join team wendell head over to fishingchaos.com and you can sign up this is like an entry level tournament this is actually my first tournament i feel like i can compete in it I'm pretty excited about it and uh, it's only 15 dollars to sign up so if you're new to tournaments and kind of want that entry level step up into tournaments you're like you're you're always curious about it well, now is the time. Love to have you be a part of Team Wendell. And my man over at Cast Cray, he is putting up four $100, $100 Cast Cray gift cards. So if you just join my team, like and fish in that tournament, you're going to be entered for four of these. And we're going to do the, we're going to do it down the road after it's all kind of done in four months from now. But you could win one of those. And right now, guys, I was just checking this out before the show. There are 267 anglers across all those teams. Over 1,600 fish already posted, which is pretty awesome. So this is going to be this is going to be so much fun. So love for you to be a part of that. Enough with all that stuff. All right. Although that is a bunch of fun. Remember, this is an interactive show, and so Jay, my man, a quarter million views. Nice. Welcome to the show, my man. How you doing? Yo, what's up, there? I'm good, man. How are you? You know what? I'm not doing too bad. You know, I, what I love about the show is, um, you know, I, I don't, I don't just look for people who have like, oh, hundred thousand subscribers. Like, I feel like there's a lot of new people to the game who are really putting out incredible content and man, you got some banger videos recently. No, I appreciate it, man. That, that's the, that's the thing about YouTube. It brings all types of people out and there's, there's knowledge to be dropped on there, man. There's, there's guys that have, a thousand subscribers and they and they're dropping bombs 
And then yeah. you got guys like Lucas from the Outdoor Conquest, man. That guy, I've known that guy for a little bit. And he, he puts out some some awesome fishing videos from uh, Lake St. Clair, catching mm. them monster smallies. Mm. I got to get up there. I mean, Lake St. Clair is like three hours from me. I just need to make a drive. I've never fished Lake St. Clair before, even though I know it's like renowned for smallmouth. Yeah, small. crazy. it looks crazy big, man. I'm, I'm trying to get out there to meet up with those guys. So fishing trip. So where are you at? So I'm uh, out like around Allentown, Pennsylvania. So southeast Pennsylvania. So I fish like Nakamixon, um, not too far from the Susquehanna, Delaware, Water Gap. Oh, that's like Appalachian Trail territory. Yeah, man. I'm like a stone's throw away from Jersey. Okay. Okay. I hiked the AT back in 2008 um, through hiked it. So I came through the Delaware oh, nice. Water Gap and all that jazz. So okay. love it. Love it. So here, real quick, tell us about your YouTube journey a little bit. And uh, as you're doing yeah. that, I'm going to read some of these comments because there's like 17 that I've yet to <laughs> nice. go. They've been uh, picking yeah, up. Yeah, man. So the, the YouTube journey started with uh, a Father's Day gift from the wife. Bought me a GoPro. And I was like, that's cool. You know, I, I really wanted a GoPro so I could show her the fish I'm catching when I'm out there and be like, yo, check out this fish. And uh, anyways, I got it. And the same weekend that I got it, I caught my first muskie. And I was like, well, I should probably put that up on YouTube. Maybe people want to see that. So sure enough, I posted. I didn't know nothing about posting on YouTube, really, like editing the thumbnails, titling your videos. Uh, so, you know, I took a shot, started posting on YouTube. And I mean, it was just I think my second video was how to make a kayak crate, which was like four minute video. And I was super nervous. That's a quick video. And, uh, was that yeah, quick video, man. But I was I was nervous. I had my wife shooting the with the GoPro, and I think right. I probably did like a hundred takes. And it was just my wife there, and I was crazy nervous. But uh, but yes, yeah, so I just started uploading, and after I don't know, maybe six videos, I took a six a six month break. Uh, you know, I figured I'd almost yeah. retire. Yeah, I had like a whopping 66 subscribers at that point. Uh, so I took six months off and and then came back. I, I did a trip down south to the Sandy Cooper with my buddy Juan. And uh, after doing that trip, I shot some some footage. And from there, I just started posting more regularly and had a video do pretty good. I, I got, I don't know, I was getting maybe like a thousand views a week, which for me was good at the time for uh, just my kayak fishing setup. Yeah. And little by little, just started building up a, a following and uh, just continue from there, man. So that was about a year ago, and I haven't stopped posting since. So I'm not as consistent as I want to be. I'm posting about every two weeks. Okay. But uh, yeah, I'll be posting. I'll be actually posting more coming up. I'm starting to commit to once a week. So I know. I mean, yeah. you, you bang them out. You put what two a week? Oh my gosh, I do a video a day. Like not a full length, but I do some type yeah. of video where there are shorts. Now it's a season, right? If you're thinking about being a content creator, like now is the time. Like it was like mm -hmm. dead the last four or five months, but everybody's searching for fishing content and eating it up. So I, yeah. I kind of put it in the overground. I literally have probably 40 videos done in NQ right now. No kidding. It's it's stupid. Yeah, that's it's gold, man. People don't it's understand something. the amount of work that goes into uh -huh like a YouTube and it's not just a YouTube channel. It's everything that comes along with it, but just something I tell, I think I have a conversation at least twice a week with somebody saying, yo, you just start a YouTube channel about that. Whatever <laughs> it is today. I was talking to my buddy who likes to play poker. I said, you should start a YouTube channel. Yeah. And like, what? Do it. Yeah. And like everyone has a niche, like something they love to do. Yeah. You know, I, I was, I, I follow think media for those, anybody who's listening and like, Hey, you know what? I, if, if Darren can do it, if Jay can do it, I can do it. And you can. That's the beauty of YouTube. You don't have to be outgoing. You just have to be yourself. There's no better time than being yourself right now. And um, YouTube, there's no faster growing, smaller business in America right now than content. Yeah. The influence of the market is crazy. Crazy. But uh, Sean Tannel from Think Media, I love that guy. Oh, man. yeah. I, I, I always, everyone's always asking me, oh, how do, you, how do you do it? How do you do this? How do you do it? It's like, here's what you do. You go over to Think Media, you listen to Sean Cannell, and you do exactly what he says, and you will yep. you'll be successful. Period. That's how it works. Yeah, man. Ugh. He built you know, up his funny. brand that same way. Yeah, they do. They do. I mean, now when I type in something, when I want to know about YouTube, it's how do I whatever, whatever, whatever. Think Media, right? I don't yeah. go to any other place. Trust that dude. Cool guy. Cool guy. Um, you know, we kind of cut our teeth on the same thing. My second video was also a kayak crate video. Um, oh, no kidding. 
Yeah, it really was. And it it went, it has like 50,000 views right now. Now, granted, it was done two years ago and it was, it was just awful, right? Yeah. A thousand takes. I'm mm-hmm. <laughs> just, just figuring it out. I'm learning how to cut in uh, iMovie. But I mean, a lot of that has been my channel over the years has been kind of a DIY. Uh, I like saving money. I like working with my hands. I like having tools. Um, and, you know, of course, along the way, you're kind of testing new things out. And I'm kind of getting more into the fishing stuff, like specific, not just looking at the kayaks. But man, it is it is a ton of fun. And I just love absolutely love the community. I mean, we have 51 people on right now and they are just going crazy over here, just talking to one another. And I just, I just love it every day. Like 50 comments yeah. rolling in. It is it is That's a blast. my favorite part about what I did, man. With the starting the YouTube channel is all the people I've got to meet because of it. I mean, yeah. there's there's people I talk to. I mean, I talk to to Lucas every day. My buddy Brian, the Michigan fisherman, who I saw him, this comment pop up earlier. I ain't yeah. never met those guys, but we're chatting all the time. You know, my my good my good friend Fernando, he commented on one of my videos. He happened to live like 20 minutes away from me. We got together and fish, and now now it's one of my best buds. No, I hear it. That's how that's how it we happens. People that way. I love it. I love. It. What do you do for a living? You were just telling me a bit of. I didn't get to dive into it. I did notice yeah, he has some pretty sick hats and stuff uh, on your. Yeah, Instagram. man. So I I own a screen print embroidery shop. So I've been I've been printing t-shirts, making hats for about ten years, and uh, so I do all types of custom merch. So just like this shirt, catch more bass. Right, so I make all my own merch. So it's pretty convenient. Nice. I love it. All right. So let's hop in a little bit here. I always like to bring people on who I think are uniquely positioned. And I was watching one of your videos today when it comes to, oh, we had a couple of videos you did that I really liked. I mean, for the amount of subscribers you have, which is kind of a vanity metric, but regardless, like what, 35, 4,000, mm-hmm. your last couple of videos were 10,000 views like in the last month or two, which is pretty awesome. So people are eating it up. Um, but let's, Let's, instead of going to those videos contents, because I know some of the people have watched them, and I, I want to circle back to that. Let's talk about what are the what would you say are all the factors to, to consider when buying a kayak, right? And there's this is a loaded question. I completely mm-hmm. understand this, but it is the number one question I get in the comments when people write me. Uh, you know, they, yeah, they yeah. give me their they give me their like, oh, I weigh you know 275 pounds. I'm six foot. Uh, what kayak should I get? <laughs> I was like, oh man, this is such a loaded question. Like I could do a series of 10 videos on this. Um, yeah, but, but you have done videos on, on these. And so yeah. lay it on us. All right. So, I mean, like you said, there's, I mean, if you really want to get, jump into it, you're probably like 20 questions in before you can really uh, like nail into a kayak. But there's, so my top four questions when, when I, cause I got asked the same question. So when I, think of the four most important things when buying a kayak in no particular order is do you want to pedal paddle or power kayak? Okay. Depends. Where are you fishing? Are you generally fishing close to the launch? So you don't care if you paddle there. Are you fishing up and down Lake Champlain, Lake St. Clair? Are you fishing rivers? You know, that's, that's all going to depend kind of how you answer that question. So do you want a, a paddle pedal or power? Second question is, what's the weight capacity? So when I was looking for kayaks two or three years ago, the, the hardest thing I can, or the, the question I couldn't answer is, where's the kayaks with the high weight capacity? There was no list for that, right? So I'm a mm-hmm. big dude. I was at the time, I was like 270 pounds. I'm like 240 now. And I had to, I had to find something that, was, that I knew I was going to be comfortable in. So I didn't do a ton of kayaking before that. So if you need a kayak with a higher weight capacity, then you need to start looking in that direction because your, you know, your lifetime kayak from Walmart is probably not going to hold 450 pounds, what? you know, no? 300 pounds plus all your gear. You could try it. <laughs> <laughs> you could try. It. I mean, you probably come up with some cool YouTube videos of you watching you try that. But uh, so so weight capacity is a big one. And uh, what kind of features you want? So how much storage space do you need? Do you need uh, a ton of rail space? Do you want a transducer mount like that's on like, uh, you know, the Hobie transducer mounts on the pro anglers, my favorite one. I mean, it has, uh, I think it's called the, the guardian shield or something. Okay. So you can, you just pull a string. I don't know if you've seen it, but it, it comes up into the hole, the transducer, like just oh, by nice. the pull of the string. It's yeah, it's wild. So uh, do you, how high do you want your seat? 
um, and do you want a motor on it, right? So all these features that take into consideration. And lastly, but probably most importantly, is what's your budget? If there's nothing right. wrong with a $500 kayak, right? If that's your budget, then at least it narrows you down to what you're looking for. Yeah. Um, and for me, there's kind of a cut, like three categories in the budget section. So you're looking at 500 to 1,000. You're going to get your grouping of your initial kind of entry-level kayaks, 1,000 to 2,500, and then 2,500 to 4,000 plus. Because you could you could find you could find great kayaks that are less than a thousand bucks, but if you're looking for all those features, then you're gonna you know you, there's certain things you're just not gonna find on a thousand dollar kayak that you're gonna find on a twenty five hundred dollar kayak. Right, right. Yeah. So so I'd say those are my my four most important. So if you want pedal powered or paddle, right? Your weight capacity, features, budget, uh, and I guess if I was to add one more is what I told you. Where do you fish? You fish yeah. in rivers, you fish in big lakes, o- open water. Yeah. So so walk us through how many kayaks do you own? I have three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm actually building a shed specifically for my kayaks right a now. Kayak shed. It's I called love the Yak it. Shack. The, <laughs> the Yak Shack. <laughs> I love it. The Yak Shack. All right. Now walk yeah. us through kind of the evolution of these kayaks why okay. like your first one your second and your third why you bought them right because you're, you're different weight between, you know from a year ago than today congrats by the way um it takes Appreciate work to it. do that and uh yeah walk us through why you did what when and how all right so when i was when i first started looking my only exposure to fishing kayaks was bass pro so all i knew was a send kayak a so i started yep so i went to bass pro and that was <laughs> that was the only uh that was all I knew about fishing kayaks. So I didn't bother. I didn't know what Hobie was, Old Town, Native. I didn't have any clue. So, uh, but my buddy ruined it. My buddy Vinny, uh, I, I was telling him about the kayaks. He's like, they have pedal kayaks now. I was like, what do you mean? So, like, oh, they have, you pedal them with your feet. I was like, oh, man. And down the rabbit hole I went. <laughs> so I ended up, after maybe two months of research, I ended up with an Old Town Sportsman 120 PDL. Oh, okay. And, uh, and I love that kayak. That's still probably my favorite kayak. Um, Which is why you don't sell them and continue to buy them, right? Yeah, man. It's hard to let go. <laughs> I know. I hear you. You get cl- You start making it yours. Like That's the thing about fishing kayaks, man. You'll never find two, two identical kayaks because you make it your own. Your mounts, right. your adapters, like your everything is just your, your own. So, so that's still my favorite one. So I was actually, first time this year, I took it out again, and it was like, uh, home sweet home type of feeling you fell in love all over again i get it yeah man <laughs> i had here real quick story i have um i got t- i have two right and the idea was when i proposed it to my wife whenever i wanted a second kayak <laughs> was i'm gonna sell the first of course <laughs> there you go everyone's following this logic already uh and then you know we'll put that money into the new one and i'll kind of upgrade for like a thousand dollars well you know i i buy the new one but just can't let go of the old one and I was like, oh, I'm going to go sell it to my dad. And I was like, you know what? How about I just keep it and my dad can use it whenever he wants. And now I have a buddy kayak. So anybody can go fishing with me anytime I want. And so, yeah. and then you start realizing, oh, that was a 10 foot kayak. And a 10 foot kayak is perfect for certain places to fish versus the 12 seven that I have. And then you start, and it's a deep, dark rabbit hole before you, ha- before you know, you have a yak shack. That's right. Like you, I mean, you could probably fill it up with six kayaks and, that's your river kayak. That's your long trip kayak. And you can, <laughs> you can justify it all day long. All day. <laughs> and we do. And I will. And I plan on doing it the rest of my life. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Man. So, <laughs> your first so I have, that's right. So that was my first one. And I, I've been rocking with this since uh, up until like the end of last year. Then uh, I came across the autopilot. So the old town autopilot, my buddy Fernando has one and I just fall in love with that thing, man. So I found one real cheap on Facebook Marketplace last year, uh, about October. So I ended up picking Ooh. up an autopilot 136. Yep. It is big, man. 13 yeah. and a half feet. 13 and a half. It, wow. Yeah, bro. It's big. Uh, so I've only been out a handful of times with it. I don't have it. I mean, I spent two years customizing the PDL. So this one, I'm just taking my time getting it where I want it. Yeah. But I got, got the trailer. I got it all hooked up. So this year, I'm really planning on getting out with it. Uh, but that thing's a beast, man. It's 
Oh man, I mean, it's like 100, 110 pounds, just like empty with nothing on it. Wow, that's so, I mean, I mean, that's the motor. The motor's not on it. That's yeah. bare. No. Yeah, yeah the heavy so boy. it's big, but uh, but it can handle it can handle water. I took it out on Wall and Paw Pack last year, and uh, I mean, it got pretty wakey, but it's chilling. It's like a platform. Yeah. Well, give us give us a, a kind of a baseline. Like for me, my native Slayer propels 10, 10 feet, right? And it's great for lakes in between 500 to 2,000 acres, right? But if you're rolling on, you know, a 70,000 acre lake, um, you're going to want something that can handle the water better than a 10 foot yeah. kayak. And so what, when you mentioned that lake, help us understand how big that is and why, why you take that uh, out. I mean, it's, I can't even tell you, tell you the acres, man. It's probably, uh, I mean, from one side to the other, if you're looking at the map, it's 15 to 20 miles long. I mean, it branches out, but it's uh, oh, yeah. it's a ton of water. And, and it's a lot of power boats in there. So yeah. that's one thing to take into consideration. Like, there's no horsepower limit. You got people in there with 400 horses just going through there. Yeah, so mm. it gets, and, and the wind picks up there pretty good. So I wouldn't say it's, uh, I, I really want to fish Erie on that thing. All right. So, but, yeah, now you're coming up to my goal. my territory. Well, I technically you too. If you go north, you got to hear you there. Yeah, man. So that that's the goal. Go out there and go after some uh, some big Lakers. Mm. All right. Yeah, I got to so. figure out how far we, we are away from each other. How far do you know Canton, Ohio? How far are you away or Cleveland? I'm probably like six hours from you. Oh, Jack. Yeah. That's from Cleveland. Yeah. yeah. So not too Pennsylvania's bad. It's freaking so long. It's an afternoon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm on all the way on the other side. <sighs> I don't get over there too often. But yeah, yeah. all right. So, uh, this so is, that's number two. That's number two. And then number three, I picked up in February. I actually got a, I've been working with Johnny Boats. Who oh, I saw your videos Phil on Free. this. I was going to ask you about that. Yeah, man. So they're made by Phil Free Kayaks. And okay. Phil Free has four different brands under them. So it's, it's Phil Free, Sea Stream, uh, Three Waters, and Johnny Boats. So they, they make all of them. And Johnny Boats, I think it's their smallest one. They only have one model available. There's no, it's a 10 foot kayak and that's it. Interesting. So they're kind of breaking the yeah. market right now. Yeah. 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 So they've been around for a little bit. I think they just, they're picking up momentum again. Um, and so I've been working with them and as far as, so it's a motorized kayak. I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't paddle that thing, man. I think it's just, it's lunky, but for it's 10 foot and it's crazy stable for a 10 foot kayak. I was hmm. super surprised. I mean, is it wide? It's yeah, I think it's like 37 and a half inches. So it's it's not wide. Crazy. It's not yeah, yeah. But uh, but yeah. it is it's it's stable, man. I was out there, I was standing up fishing. I didn't think I'd be standing up on a 10-foot kayak. Right. Yeah, All so right. so I've been on that a couple of times and I'm starting to like that one, man. It's it's fun, it's it's kind of like it's bare bones in the sense of if you're comparing it to a Hobie or old town. I mean, it doesn't have all the same bells and whistles. But the price is like half that of what you'd be looking at otherwise for a motorized kayak. Okay. So you have three. You ever plan on getting rid of them? One of them? Maybe. No, you're building uh, a shed for them. I don't, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. If it depends if my wife's listening. Then, yes, I plan on getting rid of them. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Hey, if his wife is listening, let's see her in the comments here. Hey, let's go over to the comments. I started a bunch of stuff over here. Uh, we got Sly Fox Fishing. I'm on Team Gramps for the Knucklehead. Uh, if you like participation trophies, that's a team to be on fishing with gramps over there. So, uh, let me see Sly Fox got my sticker for kayak today. Gonna hit the water soon with it. My man, I'm just giving you a hard time. I love kind of trash talking. I think it's a ton of fun. Um, most likely, I mean, John Cruz for the knucklehead is like a professional bass angler, right? He owns missile baits. He's going to be fishing okay. this tournament. So it's like, wow. it just got amped up from like YouTubers to yeah, like, yeah. pros. So the level just kind of, rocked it anyways we got justin uh rustin sawyers i reached for i researched for years before i chose my kayak i had a top pick and a few below that hey rust rustin let us know which one you chose in the comments i'm kind of curious that's commitment man that's um, that's good research years <laughs> and a lot of youtube videos later i'm sure yeah seriously bucktail what do you say getting ran over isn't high on my <laughs> list of priorities so i generally <laughs> avoid such lakes <laughs> good call I mean, we've all seen those videos, right? You got these boats, like, whether on purpose or not on purpose, like, clipping, sometimes yeah. hitting kayak anglers. You ever have any close calls? 
on those big legs? Uh, closest call I had was last year. We went out, same lake, Wall and Paw Pack, and mm -hmm. we made the mistake. So you want to stay away from that lake, Memorial Day, the Labor Day, especially right. on a weekend. So we went early May on a Saturday, but it happened to be a really nice weekend. And it was it was me and two of my buddies and, and three different yaks. And we were I was maybe from my buddy Kyle, maybe 20 feet from him and had a jet ski just roar between us, dude, 20 feet. And it was some teenage girl. And I honest to God, I don't even know if she saw us. She just roared Whoa. right between us, man. That's terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. So like. If you're fishing that lake, any any type of those, you know, summertime vacation rental lakes, man, early morning during the week, that's the only time I do it now. Uh, I hear you. Hey, if anybody's listening in, which I know, you know a bunch of you are right now, let us know in the comments below. Have you ever had a tough call? I mean, a close call out in the lake. And a lot of times you can kind of determine like, oh, bro did it on purpose or like, I don't think they saw me. Like it mm -hmm. just happens, right? You get to the glare. They're up on plane. Or they're just silly. They rented a, a you know a jet ski and just going crazy, come around a corner. Let us know. Um, I, I, it always helps me kind of put, put in perspective. I don't fish a lot of those lakes, a lot of boats. Just where I'm at, there's not a lot of those, um, and yeah. I typically will avoid those because there's plenty like trolling motor lakes around here. They're just filled with um, really good sized bass for the area. Um, but let us know there. I'm kind of curious. Uh, Dig says Raytown gets 300 four. Three to four hundred boats a weekend. Lake Arthur here does too. It's only thirty-three hundred acres. That is wow. an insane amount of boats per capita per acres. Absolutely. I would be, yeah, race time on like, my list, man. I'd be like, see you later. I'm fishing that during the weekdays if I can get away. And when you own your own business, you can get away and go fishing anytime you want, right? That's the goal, man. That's the yeah, goal. Right? <laughs> uh, lower, slower, lower fishing. Our ponds and lakes here are fifty to hundred acres. 99% of them are five to six feet deep. Tough fishing here. Yeah, I bet. Um, Sly Fox, Brooklyn has a 12 foot kayak with a trolling motor for $1,500. Jeez. I have to check that one out. That is a, that's a cheap one there. I want to check that out. What is going on? My, like, my whole screen went, just hid from me. Uh, let me see what else we have here. I like to get over these comments. A lot of fun for me. Uh, I was able to pick up my Old Town AP 136 used for a great nice. deal a month ago. You know what? I, I did a video on this. Like, when's the best time to buy a fishing kayak? And surprise, surprise, right? There's a couple times. Um, of course, right smack in the middle of winter when it's uh, taking up a ton of space in someone's garage and they keep having to <laughs> like move it around uh, is a really great time. I bought both of mine and got two sick deals like nice. in December. So right. both were used. Both of yours were used. Yeah, I, I've never bought a new kayak. Smart. Um, no, uh, no, trust me. I've driven a couple hours to get both of them. Right. One was a mm -hmm. three-hour trip. The other was a two-hour trip. But I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, I think I saved. I got my bona fide P one twenty-seven for like two thousand dollars, and Jeez. it retails. Retails. It had a bunch of stuff on it. He he used it once, which is absolutely crazy. Um, it looked like it came off the showroom floor. I mean, that model so, itself know, is not an old model. Oh, it came out right? last year, maybe yeah. you know, 18 months ago. Yeah, he just got oh. it. And it's like, I didn't like how it felt. And I was like, I don't I know what you're talking about, but I'm so glad this is going home with me um, <laughs> because I'm, I'm falling in love with it. Uh, I love the propel drives, right? I think they're bulletproof. Mm. I like working on them. Um, they, they've worked without fail for me. But my native Slayer Propel 10, it's an older model, like a 18. Um, I got it for like $1,300. Um, wow. propel drive like the propel drives alone right now you know you're going to pay a thousand dollars just for the drive itself um and so yeah. got some deals on those other other times you get deals are like your memorial day weekend sales and whenever you know they're trying to move old models off the floor um as new models are coming in and they're, on, they're, they're you're getting somewhat of a deals but like christmas is the time or marketplace but there are a lot of things to look out for when you're buying a used kayak. Uh, in fact, I got a video dropping Sunday on that, how not to get scammed in that process. So things to look out for. So that'll be dropping. Love to get your sub if you're interested in that. Uh, let's move on here. Uh, Loss and tackle. I almost sank a Tamarack once. <laughs> I need Yikes. more information. Need more information on that. Uh, Outdoor Conquest says, keep that seat low. Take my word for it. Well, there's a story there. 
Um, see, I love seat risers. I got I got two inch seat risers, both on my my Pell Drive, on my Native and my um, Bonafide. So let yep. me see what else we have here. Feel free outdoor again. The only thing I love about my feel free kayak is the overdrive pedal drive system. It can be pedaled or powered all in one unit. What have you seen those before, Jay? Uh, only because because Lucas right. filled me in on it today. Actually, he showed me a video of it. So par- apparently, it's all combined: the motor and the pedal drive. I didn't know yeah. anything about that until earlier today. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty sick. He has a, he had he showed a maybe he'll put a short up about it, but it's. It's a computer system. I mean, you turn it on, turn on the screen, and it just it engages and it stops the pedals, and just turns on the motor. Yeah. Uh, here's your man over here, Fernando. Just picked up a new Hobie PA twelve three sixty for a smash deal. From dugout bait and tackle. Right on. Nice. AP one twenty all day from B Fantana. T Marketplace. Do where do you get where do you get yours from, Jay? Marketplace. Yeah, so all I three of them. A, I, Oh, no, my first one I got, so I bought it new from a local store. And that was, so my, the pedal drive kayak I got when I got it two and a half years ago was 2200 bucks. That same one now is 2750 Wow. So, I mean, price has just been skyrocketing. Yeah. So, but the, but the autopilot I got, so it's a $4,500 kayak. I picked it up for 3000 with, with a fish finder, had a Garmin brand new in the box. What? Uh, yeah, yeah, man, and it had a, it came it came with a hundred amp hour lithium battery, came with two smaller batteries Ooh. for the accessories. It it was loaded, man. Yeah, you, if you're on the lookout, right, you know what you're looking for, and you're ready mm-hmm. to move right away. You can get your guy, you can get yourself a, a smash of a deal. So that's awesome. Yeah, worst case scenario, just like you, you have to drive a couple hours. Yeah, I mean, it's it was fun. I took my dad with me, and we had a good old time. Right, spend some time with your pops, take someone with you. Right on. Right. Man, there is so many comments going on right now, but I'm going to move over a little bit. Uh, back to some questions for you. Uh, yeah, keep them coming, though. And since there is so many, um, go ahead and put like qu- like a couple question marks next to it if you do have a question for one of us, and we'll come back and circle, and it's really easy for me to identify them that way. So that would be awesome. All right, let's move over here. I want to go over to top 10 kayaks under $1,000, right? I get this question a lot. Hey, what fishing kayak should I buy? I was like, what's your budget? Like $1,000. Like, okay, you're really limited here um, to a degree, right? There are a lot of options out there, but you did a video on this. You obviously did a lot of research. It's one of your Mm -hmm. videos that recently got 10,000 views, like in a very short period of time. Um, And of course, you've been interacting with all the folks commenting. There's a ton of comments. I'm curious what the number one question on that video was. And kind of walk us through kind of what your, you know, takeaway from all that research was. Yeah. So I was surprised that there were so many good. So I'll just jump right to it. My takeaway was I was surprised that there's so many good options for under a thousand bucks. Right. So you can, I mean, you could take a thousand dollar kayak and make it $3,000 kayak just by adding a bunch of accessories to it. Right. But it gives you a place to start and then you kind of just build on from there. So, uh, so, so I, I was surprised by the amount of people that love Tamaracks. So yeah. that, they, they yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a ton of them out there, man. And they're faithful. So it's not a bad kayak. Like they get a bad rap because they're, you know, the Walmart kayak. You could, I think when I was researching for the video, I found two Tamaracks, uh, 12 footers. It was like in a bundle for $800 <laughs> at Sam's club. <laughs> I mean, that's not bad, dude. That's like a third of the price I paid for my first kayak. Wow. And you get two of them. Yeah. So, I uh, mean, but yeah, just the, the seats amount, are hard plastic, like right? Was that? Are those seats hard plastic? Or is there actually a uh, seat in they're there? They're like cushions. They're not even really seats. I mean, the it's molded in a molded in seat with a little cushion over it. Okay. And like, okay. A, like a floppy kind of backrest. Okay. My man, Low Life, has one. So, Low Life, let us know what that what that is or do you have like a kayak cushion you put on there i see him over there in the comments keep going yeah i'm sorry okay. no no but um yeah like so so that was my i was surprised at how many people like those things uh but also i mean just uh just the overall comments on there was uh just people surprised too that there was that many options for them so like feel free makes some great options under a thousand bucks both 10 footers and 12 and a half footers they're okay. feel free uh Moken. 10 and 12.5 both of them under a thousand dollars 
And if you can get a 12 foot kayak at that price, I mean, you jump on it. Like that's, that's the most ability you're going to get is when you get up in that length of 12 feet or no, like I wouldn't even touch a kayak that's less than 12 feet just because I know how much I weigh and how I, how comfortable I want to be. So I like to sit up high too. Yeah. Right? I don't want to be sitting hugging the floor. I don't want my legs stretched <laughs> out. I want to feel like I'm, I'm in this computer chair right now, you know? Yeah. For sure. It's like in just, a lawn chair fishing. Yeah. I mean, you're out there for easily eight, 10 hours a day. Yeah. If you're lucky. And if you don't have so. I, seat, seat, seat. If you don't have a comfortable seat, it's not going to be an incredible experience for you. Yeah. You can, you can tough it out and be like, Oh, if you're catching fish, you don't think about it. But when you stop catching fish, <laughs> you don't have a bite for 45 minutes. You start to uh, notice that your kind of butt's going numb. And so yeah, especially I always when try you're, to... when you're uh, pedaling. So I noticed oh, that yeah. after like two trips, man, my lower back was killing me. Yep. Yep. For sure. All right. We got a gazillion comments over here. I'm going to head back over here. I'm skipping over some, but let me see. Oh, Min Elias. That's a good question. What do you recommend for a kayak fish finder? I'm on a tight budget. I know what I would say. I'm going to let you go first. I'd say that's almost as loaded of a question of what's the right <laughs> kayak for me. Uh, there's so many options, man. So you're on a, if you're on a tight budget, I mean, so so my buddy just picked up a Garmin UHD 93 SV, which is what I have. So it's yeah. it's a nine inch unit with side scan, down scan, all that. They got it for 550 bucks right now, okay. brand new units, right? So these are these were 1,200 dollar units two years ago. Yeah. So if you're it kind of it has those same type of ranges. Like if you want to be under two hundred bucks, if you want to be under three hundred bucks. Uh, but I'm a Garmin guy, so I could only really recommend Garmin's. Yeah. So, but if you want to spend five to six hundred bucks, I'd say the Garmin, uh, the ninety three SV, is is by it would be my top choice. Okay. But even the Garmin um, ninety, I think it's called the the Striker Five CV, yeah. is an awesome little five inch unit with side scan too, and it's they're less than three hundred dollars right now. I'm going to take it one below that. If, if men, Elias, if you're saying your tight budget's like, I got $125 to spend, uh, I roll with the Garmin Striker 4. <laughs> Put a Nakua okay. Pro battery pack on it. Um, like someone else said earlier, I fish a lot of like shallow lakes. Like my lakes around here, we're talking like max out at 15 feet. Um, and I don't really need, I, I use a fish finder not to mark fish necessarily. I use a fish finder to just tell me my depth and my speed if I'm trolling. And so mm -hmm. that's a pretty solid, you can get into one for a buck 25. Um, you can, you can rig up a battery pretty cheap, but if you want to get a nice battery on there, it's going to last you a few times without having to charge it up. Uh, I've, I just plug in an aqua pro battery kit. That's going to cost you another a hundred bucks. You can get them a little bit cheaper if you get like the lower amp hours on them. Um, but for 200 bucks, you're set up good to go. Throw them on your, your track there on the side. You probably need some type of Ram mount. Um, to be able to get that. I know that Yak Attack makes them. It's going to cost you another 50 bucks. So at the end of the day, I mean, all these things to get it on your Yak, get it powered, get it. I mean, you're looking at 300 bucks for kind of tight budget, low budget mm -hmm. um, fish finder. But if you're looking for a good entry level, I highly recommend don't buy a fish finder under 100 bucks. Don't do it. And I did a yeah. video on this once and the things that, that could go wrong with it, they're just, they're just garbage. Um, I would even say 125 now because I made that statement like two years ago. Don't buy it under 25, 100 on under 100. And now everything is just kind of jumped in price. So it was once a hundred dollar fish finders now buck 25. So hopefully yeah, that helped you, you make, out. You make a good point with uh, with even the cheaper ones. It gives you what you really need to know, right? So you have structure under you. So how deep you are, water temperature, and how fast you're going. I mean, that's, yeah. that's really the most the most basic fish finders to tell you all that information. It's it's nice. I mean, for what I need it to do, I don't mm -hmm. I don't I don't levy. I don't really kind of lean into electronics super hard. Um, mm -hmm. Partially my personality. Uh, maybe someday, just not today. I love I love figuring it out. I'm just looking for ledges, looking for that. You know, uh, you gotta structure. get that live scope on there. Uh, did I did you have a live scope of one of yours? I saw one of your no, that videos. Was, that wasn't mine. That wasn't my kayak. Uh, I wish it was. That was Fernando's yeah. kayak. Oh, was it? Man, yeah, man. That's that's my guy, man. The F train. He's crazy good with all those installs. So he he's the one that put me on. He helped me do all my my through hole wiring, my yak power. 
Yeah. I love Yak Power, by the way. That's one of my favorite mods I did on that thing. Okay. Well, go ahead. Well, we're, since we're talking about that, Yak Power install, you're talking about lighting systems, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it doesn't have to be lighting. So, the, the switch itself, it's just a little, it's a little switch with five connectors and one connector to the battery. So, you, what you're essentially doing is you're powering up this switch and you're just, you're telling it which one of these five con, uh, connections you want it to go to. So you have your little, uh, your little control panel, which is just five buttons, six with the power button. And uh, you're telling it, you know, you can, you can say number one is your fish finder. Number two is your, your bow lights. So the way I have it set up is one is my fish finder. Two is my bow lights. Three is my inside lights. Four is my GoPro charger. So, so I run my GoPro off my main uh, lithium battery and number five, forgot i don't think i have anything on number five so uh but you can put whatever you want and say you know the sun's out i don't need my lights so i just i just click the little button on the control panel and it turns off the power to my lights okay yeah. Nice. so yeah so i mean it's slick man uh, it's really it's really if you have multiple electronics like that's what you want to use to power them up yeah so you know how batteries everywhere kind of yeah exactly just organize it basically you create for yourself a what would you call that uh, a manifold for all your electronics yeah to a degree yeah, yeah. right on oh, right, i got some questions i'll mm -hmm. oh, go ahead no, no. good Let's so some what questions. it would give it give us a price point like for those who haven't seen it i saw it today i just thought it was like lighting strips i didn't realize it was like an electronic manifold for all your electronics on your yeah well the, your, it's yeah. not that bad so just the switch itself with a couple connectors that you need, I mean, you're looking at maybe 200 bucks. Okay. And then once you get the lights, I mean, the bow lights on the front, the 20 inch lights I have, I think we're like another 90 bucks. Yeah. And then yeah. you have to buy your odd odd and end connectors, depending if you're pigtailing some connections to the same terminal, and things like that. But I was under 330 bucks for the whole kit and caboodle. Okay. All right. You know what? It's 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 funny. Like when you get into the kayak fishing world, everybody already knows this. I'm just gonna repeat it. It's like you can buy a pair of fly, pliers, like five dollars pliers, kayak fishing pliers, twenty five dollars. It's just it's, Sorry. it's just a kayak in front of anything. It's ridiculous. All right, I'm gonna head back over to some of these comments here. Reaper, at what point do you think the amount you spend rigging up a kayak? Do you think you should have just purchased a boat? I know Never. the answer. Never, <laughs> never. Right, give me, give us your thoughts. I mean, uh, you need a why. So, I mean, that's. Pr I don't want to sound like a jerk, but that's one of my pet peeves. Is when I hear when I hear people say that, it's like, oh, for all that money, why don't you just buy a boat? And I used to think like that too, like back in the early journey of kayak fishing when I did it because it was cheaper than getting a boat. Right. Uh, but ever since like discovering kayak fishing and just being part of the community and just building up and learning about it. I don't, you can't, I mean, I'll take a free boat. Don't get me wrong, <laughs> but I wouldn't give up kayak fishing for boat fishing, man. I just, lo yeah. I love being on a kayak. To me, it has its own set of challenges. You have, I think it's more challenging than fishing on a boat because everything you do is right here on your lap yeah. and everything you keep with you is either under your seat or right behind you. Yeah. So to me, it's, it's a more challenging way to fish and, but it's more, I don't know, it's more intimate with, with nature. All right. I don't want to sound like I a hippie, it. but that's my answer. Hey, you know what? I like the answer. Reaper, I love I love the question. I used to own a boat, right? And I always say oh. that I upgraded to a fishing kayak. That's what I always tell people. Um, I don't want to go too deep into this, but I did a video called 19 Reasons Kayak Fishing Destroys Boat Fishing. It's one of my, <laughs> I, I loved making it. And there's 19 reasons in there of why I believe that it's a better way to fish. Now, obviously, I'm a kayak fisherman, but I used to own a boat. And the problems mm -hmm. that come with boats, everybody always says, oh, why don't you just buy a boat? And I was like, well, it's the same price if you buy used. Like, it's not. Guys, if you buy a used boat around the same price of a really expensive kayak, you get a really old boat with a crappy motor that's never going to start for you all the time. Yeah, <laughs> I see motor, it all the motor time. Motor older than you. I that's know. That's what they say. I, boat, boat stands for bust out another thousand, man. Bust so. out. <laughs> the, the best time. Everyone always says the best time to find the boat is first day you got it, and then last day you I let it go. It. So there it is, bust out another thousand. Everyone knows that one. Love it, love it. 
And you're right. I think it is more peaceful. Like I, I, I roll up on animals all the time because I'm, I, I have, I have two pedal power kayaks uh, and I do it yeah, yeah. primarily. I get the question all the time. Like, why don't you just get a motor? Like, because like I sit at a desk for eight hours a day, I need the exercise. And if I'm not out there yeah. getting it done, I don't get it anywhere else. So I hear you there. Yeah. All right. Yeah, would you, Great uh, answers. Would oh, you would you fish uh kayak fish with gators? Gators down south? Yeah, alligators. Oh heck yeah. Dude, that was awesome. When I did that down in uh in South Carolina. I didn't see that video. I mean, it's, yeah, it's it's uh nah, it's probably like a year and a half at this point. But uh yeah, dude, I was I was out there with my buddy Juan and my man was chasing alligators and he had a canoe at the time. He had a canoe with a little <laughs> little trolling motor. And uh, and these gators were they they weren't really messing with us. He was messing with the gator, which was provoking, bad. asking for yeah. it. No, I'm a huge swamp like swamp people guy. I'll binge watch swamp people. Um, just then when they when they kind of bait gators and all that stuff. Anyways, we're off topic mm-hmm. here. Um, let me see what else you got here for. <laughs> um, da, da, da. yeah, major money for live scope. That's for sure. Low life. He's like, hey, love my Garvin Striker Plus. Love it. And, uh, all right. All right. I got some more questions for you. I got a, a ton of questions. You have seven fishing kayaks for big guys. So if you are a big guy, let me hear you in the comments and tell me what you take consideration. You did that video. I mm. loved, I loved your thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> it makes sense now that I know you own a business that you do all this stuff. Right. Um, because yeah. it, it looked awesome, but Walk me through what was the inspiration behind that, behind that video, and what were some of your, you know, if you could summarize it for us. Yeah, absolutely. So, my inspiration behind the video was simply, so when I try to do my videos, I try to answer questions I had before, before I knew what I what I knew now. So mm-hmm. when I was, I mean, my whole kayak fishing journey was a hundred percent YouTube. So I read some articles, but they were all kind of trash compared to what I was able to find on YouTube with all the different options out there. But I couldn't, for the life of me, find a video that showed the best kayaks for someone that weighs as much as me or more. Okay. So so that's why I decided to make the video. I didn't think it was going to take off the way it did. Uh, But sure enough, man, I wasn't the only one looking for, for big dude kayaks. Okay. So what were you finding when you were doing the research that made you like, Hey, I, I need to enter into the space and make my own content. Cause I'm not finding what I need to find. So, uh, so that was the first one I was, I, I noticed that there was a lack of, uh, content geared towards, towards, towards bigger guys. And when I say bigger, I don't always mean heavier guys. Cause there's plenty of dudes in like the comment section is wild. Like, uh, people were commenting from all over and there's plenty of guys that are six, 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 nine, they were commenting on there and they're they're heavy because they're they're like genuinely yeah, tall, tall right. big dudes. Yeah, man. And uh and then you got your own different set of stability problems when you're up here trying to lean over and grab a fish and you're six foot six, you know, you're gonna <laughs> you might go for a dunk in any one of those little kayaks. Yeah, makes sense. I guess I'm yeah, so, I'll go ahead, keep yeah, going. Yeah, man. And I got roasted in the comments though, because I forgot I forgot people's favorite big boy kayak which was the new canoe unlimited. Oh yeah. So oh, I'm, yeah. so I'm going to make a follow-up video and that, that one's going to be number one, because I think I probably got over 30 comments just telling me you, you forgot new canoe. What happened to new canoe? So their that kayak is a, is a huge kayak. It's like a 130 pound hull. It's a beast. But, uh, yeah. And it has, so I just learned this about this kayak. It has 22 feet of rail space installed already. Jeez, because it has like two layers of rails on each side. One that oh, runs from okay. front to back, and it has seven other like rails around. That's wild for, for all your accessories, man. So I mean, you could really deck that thing out. Yeah, you can. I, on my native Slayer for Peltan, it kind of has two layers, but doesn't you know by no means so they have twenty two feet of rail space. Um, the guy who I bought my bona fide, I was telling everybody I drove three hours to go get, and he gave it to me for a steal and he was in it once. Um, I asked him, you know, why are you selling it? He's like, I, I, I just love my new canoe. And I looked over and it was sitting over there and you just, you know, some people just love, love those things. And, you know, come to think of it, um, it makes sense for his like body structure and stuff like that. It's 
like, okay, mm -hmm. this thing, the the bona fide P127 probably wasn't incredibly stable for you. And so I can understand why you got in it. Probably felt like you were going to tip over. Um, and, you know, it's a new canoe for life. It only took him one time to figure out he wanted, he didn't want to be in that thing anymore. All right. What we got over here? Um, Morgan, he says it's time right now for a dad joke. That's one of your, that's one of your sticks, isn't oh, it? Wow. Didn't you share dad yeah, jokes? You, you got one for us? I do have a dad joke. I have, I have a couple, but I'll just do one. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, but if I do one, then you, you got to do one. I don't, I don't have dad jokes. I, 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 I'm no. a pun guy. So, <laughs> No, I like I like puns too. But my kids, my kids feed me the best dad jokes. Okay. So they they come to me. So my my favorite dad joke was from my daughter Alexa. She said, uh, "So why do birds fly south for the winter? Why? Because it's too far to walk." <laughs> dad joke. Morgan, you ask. Jay delivered. There you go. <laughs> I love it. Yes, One she, of the only guys over on Facebook. I love it. Uh, thanks oh, for there you go. over. Yeah, man, um, I do tail. have this streaming live on our group too, man. I don't know if you if you got a chance to join to jump over to the group kayak fishing dads. Okay. You yeah, know what? yeah. So we got we got like almost five thousand guys over there in the group. Really? I'm gonna have to mm -hmm. hop on over there. I'm I'm a girl dad. I've got a couple girls myself, so nice. uh, I'm gonna hop over there. This isn't actually streaming over there right now, unfortunately, because it told oh. me there was an error occurred on your Facebook oh, okay. stream, but your YouTube showing it. Nice. Okay. So good. All right, Bucktail. Here's a comment. What if you wait a second? Lost in Tackle said, My daughter almost lost a toe to a snapping turtle. What nice. Bucktail follows that up with, If you almost lost a toe to a snapping turtle, you might be a redneck. Oh, I love it. <laughs> so, I recently posted this. There's a beaver in my honey hole, um, short, which I just, you know, when you're on a kayak, you come up. I'm, I'm recently, I've been coming across minks. Um, which is kind of crazy yeah. here in Ohio. It was freaking awesome. Huge beavers. And everyone keeps on like warning me about beavers. Like, dude, I would have got out of there right away. So I do a little research. I was like, I've come across a ton of beavers. They usually slap their tail and they take off, right? I've mm -hmm. been river fishing before in Pennsylvania. And my buddy was across the river and he was fishing that side, walking over a beaver dam to get, you know, go along the side because it's pretty deep in the middle. And he does that and seconds later um, I hear this rustling behind me and this huge monster beaver just comes in next to me like three feet from me goes in the water like I'm not there and heads over there but I did some research on this and pulled up a a, a um, story from USA Today where some dude was killed by a beaver attack like the wow. beaver bit into his leg severed his artery and the dude died so I have That's a new gnarly, respect man. For, be for beavers Jeez. that I didn't have before. I mean, everyone's like, oh, it's going to bite a hole in your kayak. I was like, guys, I mean, I'm not going to let the dude, I, mean, I got a pedal power kayak. I mean, I could, <laughs> I, I'm not going to, I'm not, <laughs> not going to bite a hole in my polyethylene and I'm going to sink to the bottom or anything. But hey, I, you know what? Yikes. Watch out if you see one of those guys. Apparently, there is some fear out there. Well, oh, my goodness. It's gnarly. Yeah. Right. All right. Let me see here. Um, well, we're, can you believe it? We're at 58 minutes. So we're coming to the end of our time here. If you have a question for Jay, we'll kind of do a last call for questions here. Um, let me see here. Let me see here. So you're at the Feel Free Kayak HQ. Where's that at? What are you doing down there? So it's uh it's in North Carolina, Ash. What's it, Ashland? Ashville. So I was down there, Asheville. There you go. Yeah. Uh so I was down there picking up the um the Johnny boats. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. it's nice, man. They had a. I walked in there while they were loading it up, and they had a like twenty five hundred kayaks in their warehouse. Oh. I don't want to leave. Yeah, right. It's like I want to do a review on every single one of these. Yeah, seriously. That's man. what I want to do. Uh, um, you you got one of those? Great. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm reading the comments over here. People are still talking about beavers and how mean they are. <laughs> um, gotta watch out for those biting beavers. Dang it, beavers mean. <laughs> my PA legs are filled with beavers. Oh my gosh. Um, Jay coming from Sly Fox. What's your oh, favorite, what part favorite part about kayak of... fishing? Man, there's so many. Um, I'd have to say, and, and I don't know if this is supposed to be a gear question or, or what, but I love the community of kayak fishermen. Mm. 
mm-hmm. and Fisher ladies, right? Like just yeah. the, the, the angler community. I don't know, man, maybe it's cause I'm not involved with the other side of it. That's not kayak fishing, but I've, I've met the most amount of cool people kayak fishing. Like everyone's super chill. All the tournaments I've, I mean, the three tournaments I did last year, but every, everyone I met there, super friendly, super helpful. I mean, I made lifelong friends now just just because of the kayak fishing community, man. So I love mm. I love the people that do it. Yeah, and it might sound like a cheesy question uh, answer, but it's not. It's not. I, I'm the same thing. Um, I, I've shared this story a couple of times, but the reason I started this show is not for the watch times, not for the likes. I was like, you know what? I'm heading into winter, and I just want you know I want to have some like minded friends, right? Um, and this is episode number 24. So I have like 25 new friends that I know if I rolled through their part of the town, they're like, Hey, you want to go fishing? They'd be like, yeah. And I've already done that. Right. Just had Bofin junkie come down from Cleveland. We went to one of my favorite spots. They went fishing for a full day and had an absolute blast blast. So we'll be like, that's awesome. And I know if I ever run through your neck of the woods, we're going fishing. I'm going down the Cincy fishing dudes down in Cincinnati here next week to go fishing with him. Nice. And it's, it's, it's the community yeah. and that's what I love about it. Um, got a good question here. Let us know if you had a different, if you have a different answer to that, what do you love about kayak fishing? Uh, it could be the same, but if you have something different, a little different angle for it, I would love to hear from that. Um, you know, I love, I also love the content creation side, right? I love fishing, but I love to be able, the reason I started my fishing channel is because um, my father-in-law had recently died from a heart attack in the home and i was just kind of like thinking i might not who knows when it's my time right lord might take me tomorrow um Mm -hmm. and so i wanted to create a youtube channel because i wanted to be able to teach my girls something i really love and if i'm not here to do it then well that's kind of lost so i'm going to create a youtube channel so in perpetuity they can learn how to fish from from that um Mm -hmm. and then it was if they don't want to fish then my grandkids can learn to fish from dad and that was kind of the beginning of the kayak fishing channel for me at wendell fishing and then i started spending yeah and that was the initial and then i started like spending way too much money so my wife and i started getting to discussions about how how much money i was (laughs) uh, spending so like then i got like i gotta monetize at this point so i you know my wife won't you know um i'm not overspending on fishing stuff and then it's like wait a second I i could do this potentially full time someday if i keep grinding at it um yeah, and so now i'm kind of like i'm past both of those hurdles i still do it for those reasons but um uh, yeah so that's that's potentially the future i mean we're looking a couple years down the road but who knows kind of interesting everyone's story is a little bit different i love this question from men elias if you don't mind me asking how much do your kayak rigs cost don't feel inclined to answer it's kind of a personal question you know what i always tell people i share everything about fishing except my honey holes so i'll answer this yeah you want to go first Sure. So he's just talking about one kayak rig, right? Not all three combined. Uh, yeah, I go individually for yours. I mean, <laughs> let's right, let's right. do it like bare, and then like with your, you need know, to do an estimate, a quick estimate on like all your the mods, which sure. is a lot so, of times more than the kayak. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, so my pedal drive kayak, the Old Town 120 PDL, it costs right now brand new is twenty seven fifty. And yep. so with my fish finder, with my yak power, the battery, I mean, I probably talking about rods and everything. I'd say you're talking maybe in total like forty, forty two hundred dollars for that yep. for that setup. Yep. All right. Solid. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. For my B uh, my bona fide P one twenty five, got on Facebook Marketplace for a deal. Usually runs thirty two hundred bear. I got it 21. Um, I think I, I, I mentioned this earlier, but Min Minus showed up a little bit later. And my Native Slayer Pro 10 got it for 1300 Now, I bought these in the off season. People were trying to unload them. Um, and then, you know, I don't, I do a lot of my own DIY kayak mods, mods, and I know you do too, right? Keel guards, I do those for 20 bucks. Got a couple of videos on that 1.0, 2.0. Kayak crates, right? Uh, I got 1.0, 2.0. I know you got one as well. Um, so I try to do the, if I feel like I can make something better than you can buy, which a lot of times I can, uh, I'll do it. I'll spend the time to do that. Um, so I, that's kind of, kind of a sub niche within my channel. There is, is doing kind of approaching it in that way. Now, obviously you can't do fish finders and all that stuff, but 
Yeah. No, but there's a certain amount of things you could do. I mean, I've seen people make their own kayak carts. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I mean, if you, if you have a big kayak, like we have big kayaks, I probably wouldn't make my own. I mean, I got the wilderness systems cart and that thing is gravy, man. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is that the double rail, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's not cheap, but nothing good is. I mean, it's like 220 bucks right now, brand new. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want something to break off halfway through the launch. No, you don't want that. I, I, I've never got around to making them. I've actually seen guys make their own. Like literally, I'm at the boat ramp, and they're like, "Oh, I made this out of PVC." And I'm just looking like, "Guys, that's only like an inch PVC. That's gonna crack in like <laughs> like three seconds." And there, it just destroys it as he pulls Yikes. a little bit of pressure on it. Here's the issue: a little warning. If you are thinking about doing a um, DIY, a lot of guys are like, "Oh, the easy way to do it is stick it up through the scupper hole." And if if you've been around the kayak fishing world, you, you'll know that's a bad idea. But let me share with you why. A lot of times people do that. And if your kayak is not rated to have a scupper hole um, cart, do not put it in there. Like a few are rated for that. You know that because they'll sell them, right? It'd be like Hobie in the Hobie scupper hole cart. But what happens a lot of got, times, guys will put those, stick them up in there. And then they start dragging these things over top of roots or up over a ledge or out of the boat ramp and they catch it. And it starts to create a lot of pressure where that kayak was not designed to have pressure. And what you end up getting is a crack there. And yes, you can repair it cracks, but one of the hardest places to repair a crack in your kayak is down in a scupper hole, um, you know, an inch down there. And it's a pain in the rear. So do yourself a favor, either get a wilderness system, get a double rail. There's a lot of other, if you have a, if you have a lighter kayak out there, they have some other options for you and the sea tugs type of thing. Uh, I think the yeah. double rail is solid. If you got a heavy kayak, uh, I yeah. personally love the native sidekicks. That's Absolutely. Man. I saw it yeah. on your setup. Is, yeah. is that like the boondocks landing gear? Like same Not idea? boondocks, uh, same idea. Right. But these ones, I mean, I, I'm sure you could, um, mod out the wheels all the boot groovies that i've seen have had plastic wheels and those are fine right those will work i love the pneumatic wheels okay. um, and so i have an og native sidekicks and then i have the kind of newer version of course they've upgraded on the, the for my b uh, my bona fide p137 and i don't typically like wet launch my kayak and so i'm the guy who will kind of park and, you know, put it all together and then I'll wheel it down. And within two minutes, I could be in the water and kayaking. Um, so that's why I love them. I also fish a lot of places here in Ohio where you can't wet launch. And so I don't want to be in it. Like I'm going from pond to pond to pond to pond, probably 10, 15 ponds a day. And I don't want to have to keep on putting it on a, um, going to double rail cart, like a wilderness systems. Um, so that's why I absolutely love the native sidekicks. Hey, some people it works. You just got to know where you fish often and what will work for you. Yeah, All right. exactly. Um, I wasn't watching any of the comments recently. You see anything you want to answer there? Let me see here. I don't think I, I'm seeing the comments on my side, man. No, you're not. Here we go. Yeah. Austin Tackle. Jay, I'm going to let you hit this one. What kayak would you get if you just wanted to try out kayak fishing with a $2,000 budget? include that paddle all right so if you wanted to just try it out so i probably my first answer would be uh i like i like vibe vibe makes some really good kayaks okay their their sheer water 125 is, is pretty sick it has a really good weight capacity so 450 or 475 pounds okay the cool thing about it though and it's it's a 1700 dollars Right. The cool thing about it, though, is that it comes with a, a pedal, a pedal drive hole so you can upgrade to the pedal drive later on. Ah, so, there we go. so you can just paddle it or you can put a motor on it. You can, you can do whatever you want, but say you're not ready to commit fully to a pe uh, pedal drive. Then mm -hmm. after you wet your feet for a little bit, decide to get a pedal drive, you can do so. Yeah. You know what I love about the pedal drive and I skip paddle. Oh, I have a, I have a paddle. It's a sun dolphin and I fish from it every once in a while when I kind of limited on what I'm traveling with or what I can, you know, throw it in the back of paddle kayaks. A lot of times the sitting kayaks are really difficult for fish. Cause my, my view is if you were fishing, like I sit on top and fishing and, and it's going to sit in 
my visibility sucks in a sit-in, as you can imagine. Right? I can't see the holes. I can't see the weed lines. I can't see the fish. I can't see anything. And it, it, a huge disadvantage for me. Um, and so if you can get yourself a sit on top kayak to kind of uh, put some seat risers to get up, you'll be amazed at your ability to be able to put that lure where you want to put it, where you think those fish are going to be. And it's really, that's a, it's a huge advantage in my opinion. Okay. All right here. Especially if you get something you can stand up on. Oh, oh yeah. And sometimes it's nice just to stand up. I mean, when you're sitting for a few hours, you're like, I just need to stretch my back or whatever. Yeah. Stand up for 10 minutes. Um, I've never, I stand up all the time. I have a, I have a 10 footer. I have a 12, seven. I've never once fell out of a kayak or even, Close to doing it. I mean, I hit standing timber and all that stuff. Um, and so try standing up. Obviously, you got to have some good balance. And as some some guys and gals out there just don't want to risk it. Hey, I get it. I get it. Um, all right. Well, we are a little bit over time here. Um, oh, real quick, Curtis, I actually have a blue dot Kona kayak cart. That's what he uses for his big water 132 PDL. Uh, it's just like the wilderness system. It's a little cheaper. And it is true. I have okay. one of those sitting in my garage. Um, oh, nice. so something to think about if you're looking for a little cheaper option, same aluminum, same stainless steel, uh, screws, it kind of take it apart. You know, a lot of times people don't think about it when they buy these kayak carts is like they drag them. A lot of times they'll drag their boat from their car down to the water and that might be, you know, hundred yards. And then if you don't have one that kind of breaks apart, you got to run that thing back up to your, mm -hmm. um, car. And if you fish where I fish in pretty sketchy areas, you're leaving your kayak and all your upgrades and everything just sitting there, um, which probably wouldn't be, you know, a problem. But all, all it takes is one joker decides to run off with something uh, that you're sitting there. So things to consider. Um, you can break those apart, stick them in your hatch and be on, be on your way. All right. Well, I got one last question for you, Jay. Um, loved having you on tonight. But what does 2023 look like for you? your channel do you have some goals what's going on in your brain man so i mean 2023 started so it started unlike these last like so let me put it this way i was surprised with the amount of growth that i've seen with my channel with the facebook mm -hmm. group right because because my video especially the kayaks for big dudes started taking off right in the beginning of the year and yeah. started picking up some momentum so uh, it definitely is It's encouraging to see that. And I'm sure you've seen that on your end where just certain videos start to hit and you're like, yeah. man, I could really, I could really just start pumping out some more work. It's encouraging to see that. So, uh, I mean, I'm on, I'm on the full grind mode with, with the channel. Uh, I'm, com I'm, I'm starting to ramp up the video. I want to do exactly like you do and have these queued up to go. Right. Yeah. So I'm not scrambling every weekend trying to get everything <laughs> edited and ready for Monday. Yeah. Uh, so, so for me is, it's, it's a lot more videos. Uh, I'm really I'm working with Johnny Boats and feel free with this uh, with this Johnny Boats um, Bass 100. I'm really excited to put out some more videos for them. Yeah, um, I'm hopefully meeting up with their marketing team uh, later on this summer. They're coming up to the Northeast, and we might okay. do like a video shoot out here. Uh, and and just hoping to get some more partnerships like that with just like really cool manufacturers, really cool people. Uh, one thing that I'm excited to do is we're going to start doing through the Facebook group, the kayak fishing dads. We're going to start doing some meetups this year. Oh, so wow. uh, yeah, man. So I'm going to do one here in the Northeast, like Pennsylvania area. Uh, my buddy Fernando is going to host one down in Georgia and hopefully Lucas uh, over in, uh, in Lake Sinclair will get one going too for this summer. So I know like we have people from all over in the group. So it's hard to kind of get one where everyone can be part of it. But right. just just meet up so that we can encourage the community to grow and help each other out. And we're all in different parts of this journey. So uh, it's, it's good when we can lend a hand to each other. For sure. For sure. Guys, if you have not yet done so, uh, please help us out. Hit that like button. Um, helps us get the replay kind of yardage. Uh, YouTube's like, hey, people like that video. And they'll push it out to more. If you haven't done this either, head over to Jay's channel, Bearded Dad Fishing. Give him a sub. I'm looking forward to what's coming out from you. If anything, if they're anything like the latest videos you got, guys, you're in, you're in for a treat. So Jay, thank you for your time guys. See you next week. I have kayak angler magazine on. Um, so that's going to be interesting. A little different angle there. Cause I know that they are all the time um, talking about all things kayak fishing. So pretty pumped about that.
Thank you, guys. See you next Tuesday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern. See you. All right, guys. Peace.